So welcome occasional teachers. Uh, my name is Tara Potter and I'm one of the three learning technologies consultant here at the Ottawa Catholic School Board. Um, we're just going to start with a land acknowledgement. So we respectfully acknowledge that we are located on the ancestral, traditional and unceded indigenous territory of the Algonquin peoples on whose territory we pray, learn, play and work. And a quick prayer, in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. God, I took this position in life as a teacher to make a difference. I love kids and want them to grow into strong, healthy, well-educated people. I ask God that you continue to equip, encourage and strengthen me in this profession so I can make great impact in these students' lives. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to flip over this view. Very good. And here's our agenda for today. We're going to be walking through what you would do with that uh, doc that you get in your um, email that the regular classroom teacher would save in ATE. We're going to be talking about um, copying and pasting those emails into a calendar event uh, from that Microsoft document. We're going to talk about running, starting and running a Google Meet, really from the basics, and then controlling those features during the Meet, how to end a Meet, and then, of course, some questions and answers at the end. So the first thing that you're going to do is this is a document that you would get in your email, and this is something that the classroom teacher would fill out. So I just have... Um, the document right here. I didn't fill out the whole thing, but of course, if this were a real uh, supply day, this would be filled out by all the classroom teachers. So some things to note about running a Google Meet is that we, we have uh, name and address of the classroom teacher right here. If there were an ECE or EA available, I might actually just put my own name there. Just pretend that I am going to be the EA for the day. And then here we have our students email addresses. This is what you really need um, to start the Google Meet. So all you have so far is sort of this information. So what do you do next? Um, and before I go any further, uh, you don't have to memorize these things. In fact, I've made a document here that I'll put in the chat um, that walks you through sort of the basic steps. There is a video, which is basically a summary of what I'm, I'm doing today um, right here. So you could click on that link and see the YouTube video. So if you forget, you can always go there. And then this is a summary of the steps. You don't have to um, forget about that. OK, so here we are. We're ready to invite our students. So these are all the students from the class for the day. So I want to make sure I highlight them all. So a little trick is to triple click. So what I did on my mouse or my trackpad is I clicked three times and that highlights the entire box in blue. Um, you wouldn't want to drag down as you normally would to highlight like a one word or something because what could happen is the words could move around uh, or you could forget a student. We also want to make sure that we scroll up a little bit and down a little bit to make sure that we didn't miss any names. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these. I'm going to press Control, hold it down, and press C. And now what I'm going to do is go to Staff Portal. Once I'm in Staff Portal, this is really important. I need to be signed in with my at ocsb.ca account. That needs to happen. Otherwise, the calendar um, you won't be in the right calendar. If you are on a laptop, you want to make sure that the sync is on. Um, and if you are on a Chromebook, uh, this little green thing won't be there. So just make sure that you sign in properly and that you're at, with your at OCSB account. Okay, so we're good to go. We're going to click in calendar. And we are going to click in, click on create. And we are going to create our event. So this kind of gives you like a mini box, but we want this to turn um, so we see all the options. We have to click in more options. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to uncheck these two boxes. This makes it so that students can't inadvertently um, add other people. So um, we want to make sure nothing is checked right here. 
And now what we're going to do, since we already pressed control C, we are going to press control V and press enter. So here we go. You can see all the students' names there. So you want to make sure that they are all present and that at this point, you're going to go back and you're going to double check that there are any support staff. So if you needed to invite a support staff, you would need to highlight, press control C, and then go back to your calendar event and add in that guest. Since it's myself, um, I'm already added in here, but you would uh, copy and paste that into there. Okay, so we have the students, we unchecked these boxes. And what you can notice is, as soon as I invite guests, this join with Google Meet automatically gets generated. So that's good. This is what we want. We want to be able to invite our students to a Google Meet. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to give it a title. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to properly label it um, period one science um, for Mrs. Potter. And you can uh, put the regular classrooms teacher's name there, period one. You might even want to put the date just to give it a proper label because this label is what the students will see um, on their Google Meet page. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to um, make sure that the time is correct. So right there, we're going to say, I'm going to back this up just a little bit. Um, because I want to make sure that you see what the students see. So I'm going to back it up to nine o'clock. We're going to say our science class goes for an hour. We're not going to repeat it because we're just in for the day. Um, and then we're going to just double check everything here. So the times are right, the date is correct. And then we are going to click save. So something's going to happen here when we click save. Do you want to send an email? We actually don't want to send emails to students. They've all been instructed to go to student portal. So they don't need to have this link in multiple places. It's better in fact and more private if you have this link in less places. So we are going to not send. And then this sort of scary message appears. Do you want these people are outside your organization? And all that means is that they are have this ocsbstudent.ca domain instead of just the at OCSB. It's okay, we're gonna click invite and external guests. All right, so we have our, our meet created for the day. And then this is the step that is going to make it very private for you. So you once you have your calendar event, created, you can see it there. I have a few things going on today, but you won't have double the event. So I'm going to click there and then I have to actually join into the meeting. And it says no one's here. I'm just going to turn these two things off so we don't get a bit of feedback and I'm going to click in join now. So now that we are in the meeting, we have to do something. We, this is what's going to keep us safe and that the students can't get into this link on their own. We're going to turn off quick access. And what this will do is it will create a waiting room for your students until you arrive. You're going to turn off share screen so that students cannot share their screen and turn off chat messages so that they cannot write into the chat. So all of these things we recommend as an occasional teacher that you turn them all off, especially the quick access. Um, you are still able to share your screen and send chat messages to your students. So the hosts can all do these things. So it is very important that you set up your own Google Meets and not let the classroom teacher set up the Google Meet for you because of this reason. We want you to be able to control the meeting as well as be able to um, remove students or mute students if you needed to in an emergency. Then when you're done with turning off all these things, we are gonna hang up the call. There, we've left the call. And now what we're going to do is, I'm actually going to just uh, become a student right now. So we have access to some student accounts. So this is one of the students I invited. 
And we see this period one for Mrs. Potter right now. So it said it started at nine and I'm going to try to join in. So again, I'm in my student account and they would go to student portal and click on the link. So you can see it showed up for them. We are going to uh, click into the meeting and then they will get this waiting for host to join. The only way that worked is because I went in and turned off quick access. If you do not turn off quick access, this will not happen and the students are able to join into the meeting because they are on the calendar event. So that's fine, that's good, that's exactly what we wanted to happen. So now I'm going to go back to my teacher role and I'm going to go into my calendar event. So now it's time to start our class. So we're going to join with Google Meet and I'll just turn off my camera and mic here. And you can see automatically that student who was in the waiting room has automatically joined in. So there is no admitting people. When you are creating events for our students in the o uh, OCSB, please never allow entry of anyone who tries to knock into the meeting. That could mean a few things. If they're knocking into the meeting, they potentially could be not invited so they could be a different student. So you don't, you want to deny entry. Um, they could be pretending to be a student who's in the class. So they can literally type anybody's name and try to join in. So you would deny entry. Um, and then also uh, it, it could be that you forgot a student's name. So if the students are all saying, oh, you forgot, um, you know, Susie's name, what you would need to do is go back into your calendar event, edit the event and add in that missing student. That's the only way that we would allow you to um, re-add a student, but never ever admit entry for anyone. Um, it also could mean that the students are not signed in properly with their at OCSB account. So all of those reasons, always, always deny entry. We are just going to double check that the host controls are all off. So that's great. Um, and then here you have, and I'm just going to go back to my presentation, make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, so we want to make sure that dates and times are really accurate. We include all the students and support staff, and we're going to turn off all host controls. We want to make sure that we are going, if you, you can go actually two ways. You can go to the calendar like I showed you, or you can go to the staff portal and to access your meet. So in staff portal, you could click on here too, and it'll have a list of your meetings. And we talked about not letting other students in. So here are some basics if you are sort of new to Google Meet. So we talked about entering the meet. We're going to talk about turning your camera on and off, muting your mic, sharing your screens, and then some closed captioning. OK, where is my meet? Here we go. Perfect. OK, so right here down at the bottom, this white bar is appearing because I am actually scrolling down with my um, with my arrow here, with my cursor. If I sort of let this go, the white bar would disappear after a few seconds. And you need to sort of scroll down so that it appears. So if I wanted my mic on, here is that ability. The camera on or off. And then to hang up the call um, would be right here. Another neat little trick that I have, if you right click on this tab and say pin, it sort of brings it over here. And this makes it so that you don't lose your um, uh, tab. So I can't accidentally close it. So that's something I usually do when I'm presenting um, is that I pin the Google Meet tab so that you don't leave by accident. Um, so there are some other newer features down here. This first one is raise hand. I'm not sure if, as the teacher you want to raise the hand, but this is what the students can press if they have a question. And what it will look like is you get a little ding 
and then you get this little um, hand in the corner. And that means a student would have a question and then they would ask their question orally. So to remove the hand from the corner, they would have to press it again to lower your hand. So if it's raised and the students uh, have already asked a question, you may need to remind them to press this part yet again. Um, this is closed captions. And closed captions, once you turn them on, they will start uh, being generated. But this is something that only you can see or the participants can see. So if the students needed closed captions, they would need to turn it on themselves. And then over here are these magic action dots. And I'm going to just talk about some different options here. I'm not going to go over all the things today because this is sort of a beginner walkthrough. And we want to just sort of get you going. Um, there are some other videos that we have about Google Meet that kind of go through more detailed views of things. And we can uh, get those links to you. So the first thing that is great is changing your layout. So I usually, when I'm presenting to students, uh, choose tiled. So that it gives you a grid. And down here, it defaults to 16. So if there are more than 16 students with you, you would want to drag this dot over and then press the X. So that'll save it into the grid. And then up here, if you want to rem I'm in the tile right now, but these little four boxes, if you can, if you can see them, um, it gets you either into the tile or out of the tile. So I like seeing myself in the tile, um, but it's up to you. And then if you would want to pin a, a screen to the, to the meet, if you're only wanting to look at that one thing, um, it, if you find it too distracting, you can pin yourself and that makes it go big big and then uh, seeing everybody else there. So I like the tiled view for students. Um, but just to go over a few of the other ones, if you had like maybe a small group of students, I also like the sidebar one where the speaker goes large and then the the uh, participants would um, would be smaller on the side. So I'll switch back to tiled. I'm going to go back to my presentation. Uh, now I'm going to talk about sharing your screen. Um, so what the type that I'm using right now is my entire screen. So if you are showing things without sound and multiple town, uh, tabs, you would probably always choose this first option, your entire screen. But just make note that you would probably need to have um, the rest of your tabs close, especially because students may see pop-ups that come up onto your screen. So just note that your entire screen really does mean your entire screen. So you can see all this stuff down here. You can see all my tabs across the top. Um, if you had an email open, for example, so you want to just make sure that uh, you are aware and that you are, prepare your screen for that. Uh, the third option is a Chrome tab. And this is, it says it's best for video and animation. They really should be labeling it as it's the only one that will play sound. So that when you're in the meet, and if I click on present now, so first of all, that entire screen one, I have two screens right here, but you would choose the screen that you want to present and then choose share. And then to stop, you press stop. And then if you wanted to show tab, you would choose your tab that had the sound in it. Um, and then you would click share and it would bring you to that tab. So I'm going to just press on stop. And then to navigate back to the meet, what you're going to need to do is you'd press stop and you can see that it's I'm still on this tab and I need to go back to my meeting right here. So we did go over host controls. So some things that host controls is uh, the quick access, which creates the waiting room. Um, the screen share is off, and that's really for the students who are invited, and as well as any other invited guests. So you need to be aware of that as well. 
chat is off for the participants. And then these two I have not gone over yet. So I'm going to go back to that. Um, and if we click into this little person right here at the top, it says two, me and my student. So if the student uh, was speaking or, and they did not know that their mic was on and they didn't know how to turn it off, what you can do is you can just click here and to mute your student. You can see as well, we have some more actions. So I'm going to click on that and we can actually remove a student or another person from a meeting. This would be really either sort of two cases. So in an emergency situation where you're stuck and someone is sharing something inappropriate and they won't listen um, and you're worried about the safety of your students, you can remove that person uh, from the meeting. You're going to get this sort of scary pop up. Um, so you do need to know this though. This person will not be able to join this meeting again. So once you remove them, they are removed. So of, of course, this was a last uh, case scenario. This is not like a discipline issue where you can give them a timeout and they can come back in. You need to actually, um, they will be removed for the entire session. So if you needed to remove them, you would click on remove and then they would not be able to join the session again. So that's sort of last case scenario. The only other good reason to remove a student is you're done for the day and a student just forgot to hang up or forgot to close the tab and you're done. Since you're not using this meet link anymore and the students aren't going to be coming back to you, um, it's fine to remove any sort of straggling students as a supply teacher because you are not using this meet link again. So in that case, you could remove a student and we can remove them right there. So you can see that they are removed from the meeting. Uh, okay. We talked about tiles. So now we're, when you are ending a session, you wanna make sure that you are the last one in the meeting. You don't wanna leave students in the meeting because then they could use this meet on their own. So we want to make sure that no one else is in the meeting and you can double check by clicking on the little person so you can see it's just me. Uh, sometimes it might say two if you're sharing a screen because it counts as a participant when you're sharing a screen. So just make sure that it's just you or your screen. And once you are done, then you can hang up the call and it says you left the meeting. Now, if you did this by accident, it's really easy to rejoin the meeting yourself. Um, and I always like to point out this. Google does take feedback. So if the audio and video were terrible, go ahead and rate them and then give them a little bit of feedback there.